Very good afternoon and a big hello to all the techies out here. Hope you're enjoying all the lectures and you're practicing hard, right? So without wasting much of your time, let's get started with today's class. And you remember we ended yesterday's class with a question that I asked you guys. And that question was what are data types and uh, lists all the data types available in Python. Right, so, um, so far what I have shown you, I have shown you few data types. Uh, right, but let me start with the first data type that we have in Python is none. All right, so this none, I will explain what this none is. Then we have numeric, then we have list, tuple, and we already saw set, we already saw string, and we did not see a range. A range is also a data type. And we have another data type here, which is uh, a dictionary, right? Also, uh, these are the available data types in Python. So I'll just write it down here. Available uh, data types in Python, uh, right? So these are available data types in Python. And if you guys are thinking of what this none is, none is null if there is no value supplied, right? Like null in uh, other languages. So uh, it's null in other programming language. And here it is none, right? So there has to be a difference. None is actually what null is in other languages. And numeric, we know that. And uh, numeric has integer um, and float already shown you right and we have uh, complex and we have bool right so this is the data type structure of python um, and let me see how many of you have answered correctly and how many you have not answered uh, correctly uh, right so let me just zoom in your answers so data types are used to define variable or value yeah maybe but uh, type int is there string is there list is there tuple is there float is there and dictionary is there uh, but you guys are akib you are missing on none you are missing on numeric you have just listed int int is basically a primitive of uh, uh, you know numeric float complex and bool you have not mentioned all no let me see Elias has mentioned number okay now it's not number Elias it's numeric uh, and uh, numeric has int flow double string is there list is there tuple is there also but I al already said there are nine one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven and eight uh, did I forget something yeah and out of this eight yeah I, I, I my mistake eight are data types and then we have uh, the primitive of these uh, the type of numeric we have int float complex and bool uh, let me see how who has correctly answered Shafat uh, data types are the classification of categorization of data item it represents the kind of value that it tells operations can be performed yeah Int is there, string is there, float is there, complex, yeah, the first one mentioning complex, list is there, tuple is there, range is there, set is there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and you also mentioned byte, uh, maybe, but uh, integer is basically, uh, you know, it uh, basically numeric is a wrapper class. Well, I'll tell you like this numeric is the wrapper class which wraps up uh, you know all these uh, data types right so because int float complex and bool is not a class since we are dealing in object oriented uh, programming so they don't have objects but yeah uh, to some extent I give you 8 out of 10 so Jahangir int float char string tuple boolean set I'm still missing out on range and none has anyone mentioned none no okay we cannot download yeah I forgot to upload it so what I'll do today I'll mix up both the um, uh, you know lessons the lesson of today and the lesson of yesterday 
I'll uh, make a one PDF out of it and you shall find it inshallah downloadable from tomorrow right uh, at the time of your lecture so which type of data is stored in memory types numeric yeah that's that's correct right numeric has in float complex list is there string is tuple dictionary and uh, a boolean is also there uh, right uh, right so but basically it's not bool it's bool uh, so set is there but you're also miss, missing out on none mm, data types are classifications and yeah we know that but what are the types akib uh, numeric yeah int float complex boolean number right in float complex boolean yeah but number is actually what it belongs to right so to number belongs int float complex and boolean only four types so number has to be here so right still not bad sequence type it contains string list and tuples and what about set what about numeric sorry what about set what about range and what about none a numeric is this boolean is this amir bashir could uh, Muzaffar known has typed integer list float string tuple dictionary set frozen set and complex set but you're still missing out on none a data type describes that the characteristics of a variable sum yeah they are there Shafat uh, but still you're missing out right so my request is that visual studio is blur usual is that usual studio is blur many times kindly try to avoid this problem right i've already replied to your problem that uh, you have to either download the video using the particular resolution uh, and this because yeah muzaffar has replied is because of the poor internet connection what you can do set uh, you can go to settings right here if i show you, you can go to settings and you can set uh, either 720p or 1080p right so it was all about data types uh, right so i'll minimize it and and i'll give it to you guys so this is for you these are the data types all right so starting with today's lesson you'll come to know one by one uh, because we have yet reached uh, we just completed new, uh, you know int we have completed float bool we have not touched tuple list and set is complete string is also complete and there are many things that are still remaining right all right so complex numbers so i'll start with complex numbers so i'll say print so let us start with complex numbers today all uh, right uh, so for example i know that num is equal to 2.5 so what is the type of none i can say please give me the type of none right uh, so the type of num is float all right uh, so we know that uh, this uh, basically is float if I say num is equal to 5 so if I say type of num now I'll get the type of num is n so this is already mm, known to you right so now complex number when you carry on with uh, your trainings or when you reach to a spot where we interact with hardware right we have many trainings available at an IIT Srinagar like we interact with hardware Raspberry Pi is there uh, for IoT devices and robotics we program Python uh, you know we program those devices with Python and we program Arduino maybe with Python or maybe Raspberry Pi for Internet of Things for advanced robotics and embedded systems and there you will see that we often deal with bytes and hexadecimal numbers or maybe uh, we also deal with decimal hexadecimal octadecimal right uh, so in that case those numbers become complex so that complex number has a specific data type in Python which is known as complex for example if I say Mm, num is equal to 6 plus 9j right uh, so I'll say num is equal to 6 plus 9 and what this j is and now here the j represents uh, the complex number so if I say mm, please give me the type of num here now you can see I am getting the type of number is complex right so uh, there we have many many different things uh, right uh, that we deal with or we can say a plus b i right so that 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 in that way if i say a plus b i so this uh, this is also going to be complex which you are going to learn uh, you know in the upcoming classes right and let me give you a recap because uh, practicals are not sufficient for you guys you'll have to understand theoreticals at times right uh, so as i started my first lecture uh, and I gave you an overview of Python and we are I said Python is a very high level object oriented language and it's interpreted always remember it's not compiled it's interpreted it's easy it's similar to Perl right so these things are 
uh, already uh, you know you are aware of uh, about all these things right and uh, today what we are going to know and what we are going to do is uh, uh, you know uh, what is being interpreted what is the difference between being compiled and what is the difference between being interpreted right uh, so now if I write I am R P R E T E D. Now, what is being interpreted? Mm, all right. Uh, so, I'll write my definition here so that you remember. So, interpreter will execute. It will. It will execute the lines of code. Right. Entered or written correctly right so you'll always have to remember so it's going to execute only the lines of code that are written correctly right and uh, we say non interpreted uh, right uh, we can say it that executes uh, you know uh, basically uh, like Java uh, right so Java is compiled right java is compiled from dot java file to dot class file so java has two stages one is compile time where you compile the file and check for errors and produce a class file that you run and here you don't produce any class file you run the same file because you are interpreting if line number one is okay go to line number two if line number two is okay go to line number three and compile time what happens during compile time if you have for example written 10 lines right even if line number 10 has error so line number one may not run because what will happen it will throw a compile time error right when there is no compilation success there is no uh, execution or runtime right here what we are going to do all right so if 10 lines happen to execute successfully and you get the result of 10 lines and if there is an error on 11th line so this interpreter will stop at 11th line unlike java uh, wherein uh, if there is a if there is any error on line number 11 so line number 1 to 11 will nothing will be executed and nothing will run because compile time will throw an error so this is the major difference and uh, other differences you will inshallah come to know right because python focuses on readability it focuses on simplicity right uh, and and it's the code of python is very compact right the python code is portable across all the operating system platforms right it has huge collection of libraries available for developer it supports functional and structured programming it supports uh, object oriented programming right it it can be used as a scripting language <clears throat> or it can be used as a programming language it provides uh, automatic garbage collection means memory allocation uh, just like mm, I saw you yesterday that is very memory efficient right uh, wherein what we saw right uh, that uh, if, if 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 the variable has the same value uh, so right uh, so it, it is going to target mm, or going to point uh, the same uh, you know memory address right for example a has 10 and b also has 10 right so b is now going to point towards the direction of a because a has already 10 so that way it's very memory efficient right and it is a case sensitive programming language case sensitive means for example if i have to type type of num so now type t is small now if i type it capital it will throw an error so that's called as uh, case sensitive right mm, and uh, what else is there uh, theoretically I'll, i would uh, keep on uh, telling you about those different things uh, right and you'll keep on learning uh, those things inshallah mm, right so operations on numbers right uh, i already said operation on numbers like we have addition subtraction multiplication division modulo x and then we have many many different things that you are already uh, aware of right mm, all right and what else is there so let me show you a demo program this time on uh, you know the IDE right uh, so this is the Python IDE uh, okay so let me tell you uh, this program so let's say this program adds to now what I have done here is I have commented it down right uh, so comment 
so comment means uh, that you are telling the interpreter to avoid it not to execute it. so this is completely going to be avoided by the interpreter it's not going to be executed All right for example we have num1 is equal to 1.6 now enter num2 is equal to 6.3 anything anything so uh, you know this is a two number so i can say sum is equal to now this time uh, what i will do i will use uh, basically a float all right so i can say i need to give i need to get the float of num1 plus i need to get the float of num2 as usual anything all right so after you have got it so i can say print i'll show you how to concatenate two different statements here all right and how to format those statements even so i can say the sum of all right now you can see right here i am targeting this this is the zeroth all right so i'm targeting the zeroth and uh, and i will target within curly braces the one right and this is the sum of zero and one uh, sum of zero and one is two now this is something unusual that we haven't tried before uh, but there's no problem in trying today right and i will say format now format num1 now it takes th three parameters the sum of zero is going to be after the format that you supply so num1 will go to this zero right and i can say comma it takes format takes three parameters here so i'll say it takes as many maybe you have to add two numbers or three numbers maybe four numbers right and a sum so now mm, uh, let me just increase the width here All right now you can see here what do i say i say the sum of zero what is zero zero please take num one so whatever you supply num one is 1.6 so 1.6 will go here mm, and then we have one uh, which is 6.3 num2 right so num will go to 0 because you start with 0 1 2 I repeat this is 0 this is 1 and this is 2 0 at the position 0 1 at the position 1 and 2 at the position of 1 so I mean I'm, I'm in habit of terminating statements that you should not follow all right and let us see uh, I'll say mm, file save as right float sum so I call this as float sum so let me run it let's hit a five okay i get an error here why because i have to close another brace here right now see this print takes its own bracket and i close that bracket here but in between i'm calling this format right uh, this is the function uh, format that i'm calling and i'm supplying three parameters to the function now if i run okay so let us run so it is a sum of 1.6 and 6.3 is 7.9 right so this is and now even if i don't call this float then what is going to happen let us say i don't call this float right so it is python is very intelligent is intelligent enough to understand these problems so run module i still get the same sum of 1.6 and 6.3 is 7 point now why did i uh, at the first instance type this so this is called as type casting if you want to convert let's say about you have an integer number and you want to convert that number to uh, you know float so in that way you can uh, basically use type casting here or convert using the format function and this is again i repeat for the final time 0 1 and 2 are the index positioning uh, index positions that we are defining here and it is going to be taken from this format 1 will go to 0, num2 will go to 1, and sum will go to this. What is sum? It's already num plus 1, num plus num, 1 plus num, mm, 2, uh, right? Uh, so is that understood? Okay, 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 okay. So since uh, you can also say print, right? So we know that uh, I don't need to do this. I can directly go ahead and I can directly print sum. So different softwares different requirements should be aware of handling all the problems the sum is 7.9 or you can say like this the sum of two numbers is and close the string and comma sum so it is going to be automatically concatenated like this so i can say this as well 
So the sum of the two numbers is uh, 7.9 or you can even use concatenation right here you can add plus minus so that's also possible and uh, the previous uh, thing uh, you know that I have shown you uh, the format function so that is also possible so that's not a problem right mm, uh, so we know that uh, you know in Python we have pad mass so if you are aware of board mass I've already told you about board mass but you can also you know the precedence so if we talk of precedence here so the precedence is going to be P R E so the precedence to be followed is going to be um, we call it as Python for precedence Python uses P A D M A uh, P E M PAMDAS it's not it's P E M D A uh, so uh, this is the precedence Python uses just like board mass all right so um, first is So parenthesis, parenthesis is just like this, all right. Exponential, I'll show you what an exponential is. And then we use multiplication. And then we have division. And then we have addition and we have subtraction right right so parenthesis exponential multiplication division addition and subtraction is what uh, the precedence is going to be python supports mixed type uh, you know math right so now for example if i say uh, let me let me go back to my ideally and do this uh, for to show you the precedence of pad mass so p is parenthesis is first for example parenthesis 5 divided by 7 i need to get 5 divided by 7 all right so 5 divided by 7 is 0 0.7 and whatever it is all right so you have got an answer all right uh, so 5 divided by 7 but if i do round let's say round off 5 divided by 7 right so it is basically a given precision in decimal digits I need to get decimal digits so the round is almost one all right so you're getting round off right you know that round off so you you, you basically it's towards the higher side so you're getting so now if I say 5 divided by um, let's say round off okay let me tell you a round of 5 uh, divided by 2 comma 2 now you have uh, let's say about two digits here right uh, what is the first thing that is going to be executed right here right so because python supports mixed type math right and final uh, answer will be the uh, will be of the most complex type right so anything that is most complex type will have the final answer. maybe 2.5 will be there yeah we are getting uh, the 2 five. so round round off gives you answer like this right uh, so you have to always remember this uh, round it is almost right uh, so basically it's going to be almost for example if I say um, you are going to, get, going to get two if I say I need a round of five divided by two we know that it's two but if I say round of five divided by two comma zero right so you get two point zero so it's as simple as uh, anything right uh, so if I say round of 5 divided by 2 let me get a complex one and I supply 1 all right you can say that I need one uh, digit after uh, you know this round off right so if I do it here again so let me do it here after 7 I may type 2 now you can see you're getting only two digits 0 0.71 here you are getting the full but round off you are telling that I give me the round off 0 0.71 you may say okay give me the round off only one so you will get 0 0.7 only 0 0.7 that means round uh, the second parameter indicates the number of uh, digits after the decimal I repeat the number of digits after the decimal or if you want to go to the nearest one you say okay, I need the nearest one right so I only need the nearest one you can say round so it's almost one so you'll say round of one means almost one uh, right 
and since we have already uh, seen some uh, uh, string manipulations now we have more string manipulations here so let print string m -m manipulations so we have few more string manipulations here okay let's say about string str is equal to hello and we know that string has to be supplied in quote so we have supplied quote so i will say print uh, str we have already seen zero so the zero of str is h we have already seen that and we may say minus one minus two right but we have not seen this so if i say um, str dot C A P I T A L I Z E. So I say STR dot capitalize. Now, what capitalize does is uh, you know it will it will take and keep the first digit uh, for first character as it'll it'll convert the first character right to capital characters right. So now you can see hello had a small character here. The moment I said capitalize now this has capital character it also returns a new string imagine if i print the string here so it's going to be again the same hello it always returns the new string if you want to restore it you can say str is equal to str you know take str give it back to str right so whatever is in str goes to str but when when we capitalize c a p i t a l i z e so when we capitalize capitalize the string and assign it back to str that's why i say it is variable it varies right now if i say now you can see that it has already capitalized right so now you can see other features like mm, i can say str please give me the count right so please give me the count of uh, h e l l o okay o o is uh, basically how many times is o or we have to count it let's say about um, okay let me see this right here zero or three all right so i'll say zero and it's basically c o u okay spelling mistake c o u n t so we have this count function the moment i open now you can see this here all right what do you want to count right start and end right you i want to count zero sorry o and i want to start from zero to third character right so zero is h e l so it's it's going to be zero here so it's not found so i'll get zero if i say str dot count and i will again say i want to find zero and let me find it zero one two three four <coughs> sorry uh, find it from 0 to 4, fourth place. So I get 0 because it's at the fifth place, uh, right? So because count will count not with z from 0, it's going to count from 1. So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. <coughs> count is going to take the normal count, not starting from 0, unlike uh, you know, when once we said print string 0, so that is the element 0, right? Uh, but here the count is going to take it from 5. So 5 means full string, so take 0 to 5 and you can get O. Okay, I have typed O instead of uh, 0, so I'll have to type O 0 to 5 and you can see one time. And now if I change and say str is equal to h o h e l l o ho hello. Right, so it sounds like ho hello and then I say str.count o from 0 to let's say about 10 who knows so you can see uh, oh I, I don't know I have this bad habit of typing O instead of 0 right so I have to type 0 instead of O sorry again wrong I I don't have to type 0 I have to type O now this time we should get 1 and 2 right okay let's see we are still getting 1 uh, because 0 to 5 we are having only 1 0 okay, 1 2 3 4 5 six seven so now we have to mention seven and i have to change this zero and this time i'll be mentioning seven and now you can see from zero 
to from 1 to 7 o is mentioned two times right so this is uh, you know when you open your notepad for example right you write then a hello here and then you write hello then you hit control f you say hey i need to find hello what is the algorithm behind that and now you can see cannot find hello maybe up so you can see hello is found so that's what i'm asking my python that uh, how many times uh, you know have i used as uh, o right starting from the zeroth and to end you can start from first position as well uh, you know one two you can start from one and you can go to seventh and you can still see still okay i i am absolutely doing it wrong today find zero start from one and go to seventh position so we can still find it uh, two and few more things that will have to be for example i can say string is equal to uh, c blue c blue right and uh, let me not use case sensitive here because uh, it may create a problem for you guys so okay now what is an str if i print str str has c blue c blue all right okay uh, so it has c blue c blue now if i say str dot count not only characters you can find uh, you know uh, the the entire string for example i am finding c how many times can you find c from 0 to 20 you can see i have found c two times all right so is that correct uh, right uh, so this is again so let me show you one more thing right here that if i type string count c from 0 and i don't know the uh, you know i don't know how long the string is going to be because i'm not going to count it always zero one two three four no i don't want to count it always you know right for example i don't have to count it right uh, so for example if i say str str is equal to uh, let's say c is blue and blue the c is right and and blue the c is and the c is of color blue so can you start counting it so it, it will be very difficult to count dynamically if i want to do that i guess i need to find c and i need to start from zero and maximum is basically go and count the entire length right so if i show you i want to get the length of str right so you can see 60 so that means the length is 60 if, even if you start counting 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it's going to be 60 so the length of characters used in str string are 60 so now that's what i say i need to get length of str that means this 60 will automatically paste it here and now we are getting an error why i need to get the length of st uh, so I need to found str dot count, uh, right? Uh, so what am I doing here? Yeah, I have to use str dot count and c starting with zero and the length of str. Yeah, perfectly fine. Three times. Now see one, two, three times. Right? Uh, blue maybe I need to find blue in the entire string. And you can see I'll get the same answer. Blue is three times, blue one, blue two, blue three times. Uh, right, so these are string manipulations and, and blue is also there. Mm, okay, and we have seen capitalize, we have seen, uh, we can also see find is also there. Uh, right, and find, did we? Okay, did we use that find? No, we have not used find. So let us see str dot find. Right, let, let us see. Uh, find we have already used. Yeah, maybe no. We did not use find, did we? We used round. Okay, we did not use find. All right, so we have to say find. Uh, find, uh, for example, blue. All right, and begin and end. So let me do this again and see seven so zero one two three four five six and seven that means it is the seventh character 
of the entire string that blue starts with I repeat 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so find will give you the starting you know length of the string right where this blue starts from or I can say I will use find to find C and I should get 0 it starts right here now if I delete it let's say about uh, I'll get it I hope you've understood it so let's not overdo it now if I delete and I start with blue and now if I say all right uh, so if I say now okay I already done it right so and now if I say find C so C is going to be 18th 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 is going to be the start. So length, you already understood. What we understood so far, capitalize we have seen. Uh, count we have seen, right? And uh, capitalize will capitalize the first character of the string. Count will return the number of occurrences of a substring. And uh, find is going to, it, it, find is going to determine if the string occurs in the right uh, entire string uh, right and it's going to give us the index beginning position of the string uh, right uh, which uh, string uh, in our case it was str string mm, all right okay and some more uh, you know binary i did not talk of binary yet yeah we have binary we have uh, you know bitwise operators and we have many different uh, operators as well that we will be inshallah speaking of next class is going to be very important what we are going to do we will be understanding uh, you know I want everyone to be attentive and ready for the next class we will be understanding the number system we will be understanding how computer reads zeros and ones we will be understanding uh, how to convert decimals to binary and how to convert binary to decimal so that is going to be a very important session uh, right unless you guys are quite attentive and ready uh, for the lesson uh, right so uh, you, you need to be prepared and yeah I am going to give you Sunday off right so the, the next day or, or maybe uh, today's class is going to be the last class of this week so Sunday is off and then we shall meet on Monday which is um, you know the start of big thing now because we are going to start learning some different things and some bigger things now because we will be stepping up and up and up slowly and steadily uh, right uh, so the number system is going to be very important not only the number system the decimal convergence how what is bitwise what is not uh, you know for example if i tell you and or right so there are there are many different operators that we have to deal with and uh, we if we know how to deal with strings we are dealing it uh, you know this time we dealt with strings we deal with strings we dealt with integer list tuples and each and everything right mm, but now uh, we should be able to understand zeros and ones as well why not so let me take a look at the time mm, okay we still have uh, a bit of time left uh, give me one second i'll be back for you guys All right, I'm back, and uh, we were talking of binary, and yeah, it reminds me of the uh, file. File is going to be available. Uh, the previous class and the class of this, uh, sorry, the file of this class is going to be available for download down in the description section, and you can uh, you can download it as per your own convenience. Mm, uh, right, and we were talking of binary now. If we have understood string, we have understood every single thing. For example, I say uh, num is equal to 25 we have seen type we have seen type of num we have seen uh, another thing id of num the address of the memory right <coughs> sorry and we have to see now if i know uh, let's say but i want to get binary of num right so bin will return the binary now you can see 0 b 1 1 1 uh, 11001 is the binary of num. So this is what your computer reads uh, mm, this as, right? So uh, B indicates binary, right? Actually, the binary is 11001. So this is the binary of 25. If this is the binary of 25, how is it the binary of 25? Now, how does computer read 1101 as binary, right? Because it's in case of digital electronics, right? 
uh, digital electronics can either be high uh, let me give you some rough idea about digital electronics so, uh, digital electronics can either be high or they can be low it's a very simple logic if you turn uh, you know if you supply voltage to any uh, integrated circuit right or any device that you supply voltage to right a voltage can either be high or the voltage can either be low right so when the voltage is low that means you turn off that voltage uh, so you supply zero and you turn off that turn on the voltage you supply one so for example if I'm dealing with uh, digital electronics right so I have to deal with like this high and if I deal it like this high high right it's going to be high and then again high then low and then it is going to be again high and again low so what is the binary here so if I'm able to pulse the clock this is where the clock comes into picture I pulse the clock I set it high again pulse the clock set it high and then set it low then set it high then set it low all right so it is going to be high is one and again high is one and then low is zero then high is again one and low is again zero now the binary here is one one zero one zero now here the binary of 25 is again one one zero zero one is that the same one one uh, sorry we had to type low here zero zero one one zero zero one so what I do here um, I will change it all right so let me keep it high here and low low high okay so one one zero zero one so now this is how you pulse this is this is where the pulse of your computer or the clock of your computer comes into the picture you will understand those who happen to learn it and study it for let's say about two three months or four months maybe six months of pre prerequisite of education right once we jump into uh, the sea of Python and jump into the sea of embedded systems right how computer and CPU works and then start programming CPU directly you'll come to know that your computer has a clock chip right here and it clocks pulses right so as soon as the clock pulses the clock pulse can either be high or it can be low right for example if you have switch back home you have bulb you turn it on so it is high you turn it off it's low so how fast you turn it on and off is known as the speed of your computer which is the frequency right all of you say I have one gigahertz computer two gigahertz computer all right so that is the frequency how fast the number of cycles for per second uh, so we're not going to discuss hardware but I wanted you to know that how digitally we process the data we digitally process the data by zeros and ones zero is high and uh, sorry one is high and zero is low and now if I do the bin of num get the binary of this you can see one one zero zero one right and so now what are the binary uh, you know what are the bitwise operators here uh, in uh, you know in Python right uh, so the bitwise operators present in Python bitwise o p e r a t o r s right so I need to get all the bitwise operators right and I repeat the class of uh, Monday is going to be one of the most important classes and it's going to be the start of all the important classes for you know or maybe the chain of important classes are going to start from Monday I need you guys to be quite ready and I need you guys to be very responsive I only find few people commenting down right others are are basically they message me that we are not able to comment to comment you need to log into your account first then and only then you will see the commenting section available and now comment down I need to know the bitwise operators available uh, right in Python right and uh, their duties also please uh, you know uh, answer this right and uh, I will be eagerly waiting for your answer and I shall uh, you know be very very eagerly to be very frank and precise I shall be very eagerly waiting for your answers and the more you answer the more better we start the next class so next class is going to be the real fun and for all those who are aspire to learn so, so my good luck to all the aspiring students do work hard and do answer the bitwise operators list down in the comment section and let me know bye bye